lecture on amino acids and today I am going to study about the optical activities of amino acids. So we are going for the optical activity. So this is based on my previous lectures. The last lecture I gave on the introduction to amino acids. I mentioned that the carbon, the central carbon of the amino acid is a chiral carbon which means that we have a central carbon and the four bonds that this carbon forms are with different compounds. Like we had one hydrogen, we had one carboxyl group, one amino group, and one side chain, R group. Now this side chain is different for different amino acids. So since this carbon, the central carbon is attached to four different compounds, it is called a chiral carbon. Chiral carbon. And any carbon a uh, compound which has a chiral carbon can rotate a plane polarized line. So that is important, it can rotate a plane polarized line. That means it can bend a line that is polarized to a single plane. Now what do I mean by a plane polarized line? So let's get into details of that. Now light is all known from a single source, light passes in all directions. So there is no particular direction in which the light rays will pass through or the path of light will. Light passes in all directions. So if I show the uh, direction of light in this manner, suppose this is the direction of light and it passes through something that we call a polarizer. If it passes through a polarizer, then we find that these light rays are polarized in a single path. So suppose the single path is like this. Okay? So this is what happens to a light ray when it passes through a polarizer. It will uh, polarize the light in a single path. So it will remove all the other parts of the light and it will convert into a single path of light. Now we will look into the optical activity of amino acids. Now suppose we pass it through a chamber, a cylindrical chamber and it contains the solution of amino acids. contains the solution of amino acids at a particular concentration and this light is of certain wavelength suppose the wavelength of this light is lambda this is the wavelength of the light and for this whole experiment we need a particular temperature so suppose we take T as the temperature now when this light passes through this apparatus containing the amino acid solution. What we find after this is that the light is bent to the original axis. This is the rotation of light. That is light which was passing through this plane has bent to a different plane because of this amino acid solution. And why this amino acid solution has turned it? Because amino acids contain chiral carbon atoms at the center. So chiral carbon atoms show these sort of uh, properties when they can bend light. Now, light can be bent either towards the right or towards the left depending upon what type of compound it is. So what is why the previous diagram we had a plane polarized light passing through a container containing chiral compounds and then it was bent towards the right. Now this angle can be either towards the right or towards the left. This depends on what type of compound it is. So if the compound bends light towards the right, it is called a dextro rotatory compound. And if it bends the light towards the left, it is called the levorotatory. Now, dextrorotatory by convention, it is given a plus sign. And 
denoted really by convection is given a minus sign. Dextrotary can also be denoted by small d and liberatory by small l. So this depends on what type of compound we have. If the compound is liberatory, you will rotate the light towards the left. If it is dextrotary, then it will deviate the light towards the right. That is about in which direction the light will be uh, bent, either towards the left or towards the right. Now let us move into another very crucial part is understanding how much light will be deviated. That is the optical rotation of a compound. How much rotation of light does it cause? So let us look into this. Let us know the previous diagram that we had and we can understand easily from that. C 
is the concentration of the solution present inside the container. Okay. So another important point is this L is the length of container, but in decimeter. This is really important. Always find the length in decimeter. And concentration will be gram per ml. And observe it will obviously be in dB. So length in decimeter which is very important. And concentration in gram per ml. By putting these values here, you can find the specific optical rotation at a particular temperature and particular wavelength of light. Now, if the wavelength of light is taken as 589 nanometers, if the wavelength is 589 nanometers, then by convention we express the specific rotation as T D, where D is the wavelength. This is the convention. If you find somewhere it is given that alpha T D, and you need to find out the wavelength. D always means 589 nanometer of light. Okay, remember that. If in place of lambda it is given D, then remember that for D it is 589 nanometers of light. I hope that is clear. So this is the formula that will help us get the op specific optical rotation of a chiral compound. Okay, how much it can bend light per unit length per unit concentration so that we can observe optical rotation. I hope the whole thing is clear. This is a very simple thing and now we will do one problem just to understand the application of this formula. I hope that's clear. So this is the question on to find out the specific optical rotation. So the question goes like a solution of L leucine. Well, leucine is an amino acid. Okay, leucine is an amino acid that has a chiral carbon. So L leucine, 3.0 gram per ml, which is the concentration of L leucine of 6 normal HCl. So in 6 normal HCl, which is the solvent, we have 3.3 gram per ml of leucine. Had an observed optical, uh, observed rotation of plus 1.81 degrees. That was the observed rotation in 20 centimeter polarimeter tube. Polarimeter means the tube in which we have the chiral uh, carbon. Just like in the previous uh, diagram, we saw we had one tube through which the light will pass. Okay. So what we say here in this question is this angle is plus 1.81 degree. Okay. This length is 20 centimeter and the concentration of M you see we must remember the concentration of amino acid is what we need. So here the concentration of the amino acid is 3 gram per ml, not the 6 normal concentration of ACL. Okay, this is the solvent, we need the concentration of the solute. So it is 3 gram per ml. So the concentration will be 3 gram per ml. So this is what we need. Now let us try to find out. So here what we have, what we have is the observed rotation enough which is plus 1.81 degrees. We have the length which is 20 centimeter. So we need to convert it to uh, decimeter. So it is 2 decimeter. Millicentry decimeter. So we divide it by 10. We get the answer. Uh, then we have and see the concentration. Concentration is given as 3 gram per ml, which we need as 3 gram per ml. So, therefore, what is the specific optical rotation? We need to find the specific rotation. So, therefore, alpha temperature and some wavelength, wavelength does not matter, but required as well. So, is equal to A0 by L into C. So, what is A0? A0 is 1.81. What is L? L is 2. And this is 3. So 2, 3 is a 6. We have 1.81 by 6, which will be something around uh, 0 0.3, uh, 0, 0 0.13. So that will be the degree 
of rotation. That will be our specific optical rotation if these are the given conditions. Okay? So I hope that it's clear on optical activities how to find out the specific optical rotation, what is specific optical rotation, what is observed optical rotation, how does the what should the length be, what should the concentration be, what does lambda mean and what does d mean.